Hi team, welcome to Cloud Pandit in this Azure Data Factory Master Program. So in today's session, this is a hands-on where we will be discussing about how to register and generate a API barrier token using the Postman. This particular token we will be using in the next few sessions to see how to access the data from the REST API using this token. Now the prerequisite for registration and login is first we should know how to install and how to use this particular Postman. So I have already installed and uh, um, Postman tool is ready so I can directly use that. Next one is the REST URL to which I need to register and login. We should have this particular URL. I will keep it in the description. You can just access it. Let's quickly jump into the lab. Now if you look at this, this is my Postman tool. We already discussed in the previous session. Whenever you want to make a new request, you can click on the plus here. Okay. Here you can just put your URL and the method you can choose here and you can put some body or parameter authorization here. So let's quickly discuss about the how to register. Okay. So if you look at this, this is the appsolvold.com is the rest URL uh, like uh, that. I'm basically this particular online URL that I'm using. So within this, if you look at here, to register for the API. So this is the URL you need to use. Copy this URL. Keep this URL here. Okay. And if you look at some more details about this URL, it uses the post method and it required a body. Body is having the name and uh, what is your mail ID? What is the password? So these details I need to keep it uh, in order to register. So when I have passed uh, the post method I selected, when I have passed new email and password, what it says is if everything goes well, you will be able to see the message as success. If your email already existed, you will get a message saying that already existed. So now we will be using the post method and this is the body. Let's go to the postman. This is the URL. The method is post go to body select the raw data. So this is the data which is a, not a text. It's a key value with JSON. So select the JSON and uh, change your names right here. I'll say cloud pundit MS. Okay. And uh, email address is basically you need to use your cloud pundit 34 at the rate gmail.com. So password I'll be just giving it as a cloud at the rate one two three. Once you updated these details, you can just click send. As I have given new email, it saying the message is successful. Now what you can do, you can just copy this particular details, whatever you are seeing down right here. You just copy all these details into your notepad. I'll tell you, okay, what is the use of this? Now go back. So what you need to do, you can uh, see a few more details, right? What we discussed is if this mail ID already existed, you will get a uh, uh, at the time of registration, you'll get an error saying that uh, mail already available. Let's see that message. So already we registered earlier. That's why it is saying uh, already registered. Okay, fine. Now, if you want to save this registration URL always, you can just click on this save as and you can just say that the name is just a registration. So registration is the name I have given. So under this collection, I'm saving this. You can save it here. So this is how you will be doing the registration to this particular API. Now, step two is what? Step two is you need to log in. How to log in? So to log in, this is the URL post method you need to use. This is the body. Body should have a mail ID and password. That's all. Take this particular email. Okay. So change this particular URL here. Method is post. Body should have only what? Email and the password. Now you just make a request again. What it is saying? It is again successful. If you see when I log in, these are the details I got. When I register, these are the details I got. Now, very important point is whatever token you got at the time of login, that particular token you need to use to make the API request. So that's why it is very important in real time. Whenever you log in, basically the token will generate. It will available for five, 10 minutes. So that's why every time we need to generate the URL. Okay, we just have seen how to generate this URL because it is very important before we go and do the things in the ADF or Synops or Fabric. We have to learn how to check these things, how to test them 
from the postman, then we can able to use them. So you have clearly seen for registration and login, both are different tokens. So I'll be using this token to make the uh, request to the AP. Now, if you look, go back to here, okay, uh, URL here, it clearly says calling a registry AP with the authentication. So we need to make a uh, authentication uh, request to the API. What this API does is basically, okay, what this API does is it will get all user details. It will get all user details. Take this particular URL and this particular URL method is get. This URL method is, this particular URL method is get very important. Along with that, this time we need to pass the header information. Which information we need to pass? Header information we need to pass header should have the token header should have the token let's quickly see these things so now you can just uh, remove this you can keep this particular get all users rest url and as you just have seen it accepts the it uses the get method and you can just go to authorization okay in authorization it clearly says uh in our headers basically sorry not authorization you need to go to headers in headers what you need to choose you need to put the key value page before you go and put the headers key value page key is the authorization uh, value is the barrier token so before you go and put this key and value page in authorization here you need to choose a barrier token okay this is the type of authentication that i am using that authentication keys we need to pass it through the headers so what is the key key should be the authorization key should be the authorization okay what should be the value value should be the barrier should be there this is the text should be there okay space you need to keep this particular token as i mentioned the token which were received at the time of login you need to take this and you need to give the space and keep it here once you put all these things now you can make a send request now you can see all the data it is giving, correct? So all the user details it is giving. Okay, per one page, per page 10 records it is giving. Okay, so total records that we have is 35,110. Total pages that we have is 3511. This is the metadata. The actual user details is under data. Under data, we have a collection. Collection of user details, correct? Now, some people may have a doubt, what happens if I remove this particular body? So many people have this particular doubt, right? What will happen if you make the request uh, without that particular username and password? Do you see any difference? Because we are not authenticating the details based on the body, we are making the authorization based on the token that we have passed. That's why whatever username and password we have passed here, it is not mandatory as I just kept it. Uh, so I left it like that, but without that username and password also, using only the token we are making the request to get the user details okay so in the next session what we will be doing is we will be basically generating this particular token we already generated this token here right i will use this particular token okay to make the request to this particular rest api from the copy activity i'll get the data and load it into the data like storage let's quickly see that particular lab Thanks for uh, basically watching this particular session, friends. I request all of you to subscribe uh, my YouTube channel and uh, support me and uh, encourage me to do the more videos team. So I request everybody to subscribe and uh, support me. Thank you once again.